I greet everyone. It's been long since I came on life. And I'm a less busy now when I want to discuss some things with you. I'm out of town and I want to discuss one or two things with you. That is very important. I want you to Invite a brother, invite a sister when you come on life. It's very important we discuss things that will be a blessing to our lives. So we don't respect when you come. Kindly, kindly share for me so that we all be a blessing to you. What I'm about to discuss with you with all due respect. When you come kindly share for me, it's just a brief and a very short life that I'm coming. I'm not going to and I hope you are gonna be blessed watching me. Uh, everybody online, God bless you. Mercy, God bless you for coming online. Victoria, God bless you for coming online. When you come online, kindly share for me. Invite a brother, invite a sister. Okay. Nana. Nana, Kwasi, Sikapa. Hey, Solution, I miss you. I miss you, I miss you, Solution. I miss you so much. Thank you so much. I'm going to discuss one or two things with you that is very important. And that is very, very important to my heart. And then I'll go for my service. Because as, as I've told already, I'm not in the country, Ghana. But I want to discuss one or two things with you before I go to our service. And then... I'll come back live tonight uh, to discuss something important with you too. So when you come online, can you share for me? Can you share for me? Can you share for me? Let somebody be a blessing. Let somebody be a partaker. All right. The Bible says something that let us work our own salvation with fear and trembling. And there's one thing that I want to discuss with you, that salvation is an individual thing. We all have to wake up our own salvation with fear and trembling. It simply means a salvation is individual thing. You don't have to look at what somebody is doing to work out your salvation. It's an individual thing. 
You understand what I'm trying to say? So you have to, as an individual, work out your own salvation. Because there are so many things that is going on that if you don't take care, it's going to distract you from working out your own salvation. And if you don't take care, it's going to destroy your Christian life. And those things are always coming from the people that we trust so much and we believe them to be men of God. Recently, I've come to realize that one of the biggest problems of Christianity is not the unbelievers, but the biggest problem of Christianity nowadays is those called pastors. They call themselves men of God. They are the most difficult and the most uh, destructive people to Christianity. That is the reason why before now you could hear somebody like Avan Ben Moshe criticizing Christianity and criticizing the Bible. But now it's no more Avan Ben Moshe, but it's about pastors that had to protect the Bible and rather discrediting the Bible and speaking against the Bible. So I always say that recently the biggest problem of Christianity is not the unbelievers, but the so-called men of God, the confused men of God are the biggest problem of Christianity nowadays. So if you don't take care because of what some men of God are doing, you will end up losing your salvation and you end up I mean, going into hell or being in hell. So it is very important and very vital that as a Christian you have to understand that the most important thing that you got to work it out and protect it as an individual is your salvation. Because if you try to look at somebody and what somebody is doing or what somebody is saying and how some pastors are behaving, you'll be tempted to, 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 to destroy your own salvation and to discredit even Christianity and to be speak against being a Christian. So I want you to understand that salvation is individual. When I talk about individual, I am talking about I have to work up my salvation and you have to work out your salvation. And you have to understand that the Bible said on the judgment day, every one of us individually will stand before the throne of God and give accounts on which we did on earth. It means that I'm going to give my account alone, which you are going to give your account alone. So if you look at what I'm doing, and as a result of that, you decide to destroy your own salvation. It means you are going to hell based on your own credit because I cannot work out your salvation for you and you cannot work out my salvation for me. So it is very important and very necessary that you understand that you do not have to look at what somebody is doing and how somebody is living their lives to work out your own salvation. I have to be honest and sincere with you this evening that if you look at what many men of God are doing and how many men of God are living their lives, you will be tempted to destroy your own salvation and to destroy your own aim of going into heaven. So the reason why I'm doing this life is to tell you to hold on to your faith. Listen to what I'm saying. Hold on to your faith. Don't look at any man of God who call himself of God to just serve God or worship God. But understand the fact that that man of God is going to give an account alone which you yourself is going to give your account alone. So if you follow any man of God and lose your salvation, listen and listen well. Although God is going to hold that man of God responsible, but at the end of the day, it is you who is going to hell. So it's very important you understand what I'm trying to communicate this evening. That please, the biggest enemy of a Christian is a Christian. The biggest enemy of the Bible is those who hold the Bible. The biggest enemy of a pastor is a pastor. So please, it is very important that don't look at any man of God because there are some people they were never men of God in the years past. They were men, never men of God. 
Because I want you to understand that time always reveals the true nature of every person. Time. Time. So I am not surprised that nowadays men of God who are supposed to protect Christianity are... Yeah, my wife is... My wife is really disturbing me, so kindly forgive me because I'm using a Wi-Fi in my hotel while I'm lodging for my program. So kindly forgive me. All right, so let me go straight to my point. What I'm trying to say is that men of God who are supposed to protect Christianity and, so, and supposed to protect the kingdom of God are now rising against Christianity themselves. So if you are not rooted in the word of God and in the things of God, what some man of God will say or some man of God will do would affect your Christian life and will affect your journey to heaven. So please, if you are here and you are a Christian, don't allow any man of God, a so-called man of God, to destroy your vision of getting internal life for your soul. I'm not surprised that a man of God could come out and say, that the Bible, which is supposed to be a manual to Christianity, is full of lies and a cake. I'm not shocked and I'm not surprised because when somebody is not led by the Spirit of God, and when somebody is a baselighted man of God, a man of God who has baselighted, they would always dispute the scripture because I would never understand and I would never get it. When, 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 when you see somebody who is saying that he is a lawyer who enters into the courtroom and will not quote the constitutions of the, of, the, of the country in which he is a lawyer, as much as you may be so knowledgeable and have a lot of wisdom, when you enter into the courtroom, we don't talk about facts. We don't talk about your knowledge and we don't talk about your wisdom. When you are a lawyer and you enter into the courtroom, you talk about the law, the constitution. That is what you talk about. So any man of God who disputes the power of the scripture, who say uh, the scripture or the Bible is a cake and full of lies, and any man of God who say the Bible is a storybook, is a man of God who has fallen from the grace. Because there are so many men of God who are falling from the grace to grass. They are from grace to grass because a lawyer can never go to the court and start quoting the Bible. Because in the court, we don't talk about the Bible. We talk about law. We talk about constitution. So when a lawyer gets to, what do you call it? When a lawyer gets to the court room, he talks about law. So there's no way you can be a man of God and not be talking about the Bible. What makes you the man of God in the first place? God never called anybody to talk about wisdom and knowledge. You understand what I'm trying to say? God calls every one of us to talk about the scripture, the Bible, the word of God. That is a manual. Because I don't know that you can ever, I don't believe you can buy, ever buy a TV set or any electrical gadget. When you buy that electrical gadget, there's something that we call a manual in that gadget. If you want to control that electrical gadget, you have to use that manual to control the electrical gadget. If you understand what I'm trying to say. So, the manual that God gives to every Christian is the word of God. And the word of God can never be full of lies and a cake. No, it can never be. It's simply that you, can, you don't understand the scripture or you don't have the Holy Spirit to translate the scriptures onto you. That, that is when you can, you can only say the word of God is an a cake and full of lies. So every lawyer doesn't talk about wisdom. Every lawyer doesn't talk about knowledge. Every lawyer doesn't talk about what they have learned, the philosophies they know. Lawyers talk about law. When they go to the courtroom, they quote the constitution, article 111.1, so one says. That is what they talk about because the law that he has learned make him a lawyer. So without the law and the constitution of the country, you can never be a lawyer. So lawyers quote the law and they quote what we call the constitutions. So a man of God has to quote the Bible. That is the constitution. The Bible is the constitution. The Bible is the law, is the manual for Christianity. 
So if a man of God tells you that the Bible, which is supposed to be the manual, which is supposed to be the constitution of Christianity, is, an, is, is, is a cake and full of lies, it simply means that that man of God is sick in the head. He needs to be checked up. He's not well. I'm telling you. You know me, there are so many things that a lot of men of God, men of God will, will be afraid to say without saying without any fear and without any, any contempt. I'm not afraid of anything. The truth is truth. You can never be a man of God without the Bible. What makes you a man of God? You can never be a good Christian without the Bible. What makes you a Christian? The only thing that guides your ways, the only thing that guides your steps as a Christian, as a man of God, is the Bible. So when that's what I'm saying. That when you buy any little car gadget, for you to be able to have total control and access over that gadget, and that TV station, and that, radio, and that TV set, in that air condition, in the microwave, all these things, right? You will need the manual to know how to operate it. And when God brought us Christ, he gave us the Bible as Christian to help us to know how to work with God. The likes and the dislikes of God. When you go to some, 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 some religion like Buddhists, the Buddhists have their, their own books which they read to understand what they are doing. The Hindus have their own. And I have never heard any Buddhist condemning the they are books, and I've never heard any 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 Arakishan are condemning their books. I've never heard any Muslim, genuine Muslim, condemning what we call the, the the Quran. So why is it that men of God are now coming out to dispute the Bible and to say the Bible is a storybook, and some say the Bible is full of lies and it's a cake? It simply means they are they, they are backsliding men of God. They are backslided. No genuine man of God who has the spirit of God in him will dispute the Bible. Because what makes you a man of God is your calling. Number two, the word that God has given to you. The Bible said, every man sent by God, God gives him a message. So if you are really sent by God, God will give you a message. What is the message? What is the message? They are hoped in sheep's games. And they pretend to be men of God, deceiving people of God, causing a lot of people to be confused and frustrated. It is very pathetic if you are not rooted in the things of God and you are a baby in Christianity. These men of God can, can, can cause you to fall. You will fall. You will fall. Because it is very painful and very pathetic for a man of God to say the Bible, the word of God. The word of God, which is the manual of God, which is the 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 the, 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 the things of God, the mysteries of God, is an archaic book. Wow. Wow. Then what makes you a man of God? So please, whoever watching me, I want to encourage you to hold on to your your faith. Don't listen to these people. They are they, they are they are charlatans. They are. They are charlatans. They are not genuine men of God. Most of them were being called by God genuinely. But they are, they are, their wayward life has caused them to backslide. They backslide. And they are not walking in the ways of God. So be steadfast in the things of God. Be steadfast in the things of God. It's very important. Don't let anybody deceive you. Don't follow, don't follow any man of God and lose your salvation because judgment is individual. It's individual. No man of God would face your judgment for you. You stand before God alone. And he's going to stand before God alone. So if you allow anybody to deceive you and make you lose your soul, You've, you've, you've destroyed yourself. We don't need anybody to come and tell us whether the Bible is real or, or fake. We don't need anybody to come and tell us whether the Bible, right, is full of lies. We are mature to know them by ourselves. We are not kids. So if you have found out your own revelation, keep it to yourself, Pastor. Keep it to yourself. We don't need it. Enough of this bullshit. We don't need anybody to come and tell us the authenticity of the word of God. We don't need anybody but anybody to come and tell us the genuineness of the word of God. We know it ourselves. We are convinced of what we are following. 
That is what I want everybody watching me right now to understand that you have to be convinced about what you are doing because there are many things that you are going to hear more than what you're hearing because a lot of people were never men of God but it with time God did that time to expose them and with time they are exposing themselves and they are exposing their ignorance. I'm telling you. So with all due respect wherever you are watching me from Hold on to your faith. Stand well, stand fast in the things of God. Cleave to your scriptures because we are in the end times. As we have men of God, we have people who are also working for the devil. They are doing everything to deceive a lot of people into the lake of hell. Don't be part of them. Don't be one of them. Understand what you are doing. One of the greatest discovery is knowing God. And one of the greatest knowledge is knowing God. There's no knowledge than knowing God. And I want you to understand that. Please, hold on to that knowledge of knowing God. I'm telling you this from my heart because a lot of people who are not rooted in the things of God are confused and devastated now. They don't know what to do. They don't know what to believe anymore. There are so many people who are not rooted in the things of God who are, who are, who are confused and frustrated because of what some pastors are saying. At least we should let those who don't know God fight us, then we prove them or we disprove them with the scripture. But it's very painful now that those who are supposed to protect the scriptures are rather disputing the scriptures. So if you are not rooted in the things of God and you are not rooted in the word of God, you would be forced to backslide. And you will lose your salvation. I'm pleading with you Whoever is watching me, with all due respect, don't allow anybody to frustrate you about the Jesus you know. He came to this world, he died, resurrected, and seated, and seated at the right hand side of God, interceding for us. And nothing can change our mind. We are convinced. So please. If you have gotten any other revelation and any other insight, please take it to yourself. Stick it to yourself. We don't need it. We already know what we have. And that is what I want you to make up your mind. That no matter what anybody says, the God that you know is God. The Jesus that you know is Jesus. The book of Hebrews says, He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changed. He changed not. And that is what we're talking about. Don't allow anything to distract the, your, 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 your peace. Don't allow anything to destroy your Christian life. Don't allow what any pastor or any so-called pastor is saying make you have a double mind, double mind about the Bible and about the God and about Jesus and about the Holy Spirit and about his angels. They are real. They are real. Just, just, now, just a few years some small boy will just come and be a man of God and be a pastor, get small money, get small crowd and begin to talk nonsense about the Bible. Whilst you have big men of God here who have studied theology, advanced theology, diploma in theology, theology masters who understand the scriptures very well and have never disputed the Bible. You just came, came into ministry for like five years, ten years and you want to speak against the Bible. Whilst we have big, big men of God like Archbishop Duncan Williams, we are big men of God like Bishop Sam Kwanchiankra, uh, Bishop Jemisa. We are big men of God like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Sam, uh, 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 Apostle Jemisa, Sam Kwanchiankra, right? Bishop Charles Adia Saris. They have all learned the scriptures and they have lived with the scriptures all their life. And they have never disputed the scripture. They have worked with the scriptures all their life. You just came into ministry 10 years. And you have the guts to dispute the scripture. As if you are wiser than these men of God. They have great, great men of God. 
We had bunkies. They have all gone around the world with the same scriptures and preaching about Christ, winning souls for God. But you, as a man of God, as a Christian, you can't win souls for God, and you are rather you than a you turn to dispute in the Bible. How many years have you studied the Bible? What theology have you learned? What do you know about the things of God? Please, don't listen to these charlatans. They have nothing important to tell you. You have followed the right path for being a Christian. It's a genuine path. It's a path to salvation and eternity. Don't let anybody cause you to make a U-turn and turn away from that way. Please and please and please, I'm pleading with you. The Bible is never a storybook. The Bible is never a cake. The Bible is never food of lies. Those saying that are people who are rather a cake. They are a cake and they are not men of God. They can never be men of God. No genuine called man of God will speak against the Bible because that is the manual of Christianity. No genuine man of God. Any man of God you see speaking against what we call reality and facts and disputing the Bible is never a man of God. Because there is no reality that can cancel the word of God. There is no wisdom talk that can supersede the word of God. There is no, there is no uh, 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 facts that can cancel the word of God. I'm being as honest as honest we come to you. The most authentic word that has stood all tests of times and that still stands is the scripture. So we don't need somebody who has just been in ministry for 10 years to come and tell us that the uh, Bible is a story book, is a cake full of lies. How many years has the person read, read the Bible? The person been talking about that nonsense that didn't even have a Bible. And they call themselves men of God. They are wolves in sheep skins or sheep clothes. Pretending to be men of God, but they are working for the devil. Nobody has the spirit of God in him that can stand against Jesus. The Bible said, anybody who has the spirit of God, of God in him or the spirit of God in him can never call Jesus Christ a curse. So it means that anybody who is able to call Jesus Christ a curse doesn't have the spirit of God in him and even doesn't know God. That is the truth. That is the reality. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? There are people who have hold on to these scriptures for years. Who have gone throughout the whole world with the scriptures. Win souls for God. Prepare people for eternity. And never spoke against the word of God. You came into ministry, just have some small churches. And some small crowd and some small money. And you are talking nonsense. In the name of speaking reality is fact and truth. To hell with your reality. To hell with your fact and to hell with your truth. And we will always defend what we, we believe in. We will be ready to die for what we believe in. We don't need anybody to come and tell us whether the Bible is real or fake. We don't need it. We know it ourselves. We are not kids. We are not boys. We are men. We are women. We have mind. We have a mind of our own. We understand what we're doing. So you can come and tell us whether the Bible is a cake or fake or real. Or, we don't need that bullshit. We don't need it. As a matter of fact, we don't need it. So I want to tell every Christian watching me that hold on to your faith. Do not allow anybody to corrupt your faith. You are on the right path. Being a Christian, you are on the right path. Don't always bear in mind that not everybody that calls himself a man of God is working for God. There are so many men of God working for the devil. They got the money from the devil. They got the fame from the devil. And the devil has given them a task, an assignment to deceive a lot of people to hell. So we always remember not everybody that calls himself a prophet of God, an apostle of God, a reverend of God, is of God. 
It's just a title. They can just buy it. And it doesn't mean that God has called them because nobody can ever rise against the God that called him. As I'm talking to you now, if you see that I've made a new turn and begin to speak against the Bible, begin to speak against Jesus in the name of speaking truth, speaking reality, and speaking fact, run away from me. It means I am corrupted. A lot of so-called men of God are corrupted and they are possessed with the spirit of demons. Demons. They are possessed with spirit of demons. That is the reason why they can say that they are speaking the fact, they are speaking the truth, they are speaking reality. And, to, and, and then they end up disputing the Bible in which they have to stand and talk. With all due respect, don't be deceived. So many men of God are not men of God. So many of them. They don't have it. Let, let me tell you the truth. There are so many men of God who are not even born again. Because Christianity has a status. You have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And then you become a born again Christian. Then you have to go through the beginner's classes. You have to be baptized in water. Then you have to be taught. Then you have to receive the Holy Spirit. A lot of men of God has not even gone through all this. But they think they are men of God. God doesn't know them. So if you follow what they are saying and lose your salvation, you've done yourself a great hurt and a great harm. Because they've not gone through all this. They've not even accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and best and Savior. They have not been baptized. They have not received the Holy Spirit. They have not been taught by the scriptures. They don't have any sound on face. All they know how to do is to show off their cars and their houses and begin to make unnecessary noise. And people are following them, calling them men of God. And they are, they are saying a lot of things on social media to just cause a lot of people to backslide and lose their faith. But I'm here to tell you, hey, salvation is individual. Work out your own salvation with the fear and trembling. Nobody's going to give an account for you. You're going to give your account alone. When you die and stand before God, it's you alone. No pastor, no prophet, no mother, no father, no brother, no sibling will be there. It's you alone. So understand that your salvation is individual. It's personal. Personal. But the most painful aspect of the whole thing is the pastors, so-called, because I don't believe they are, so-called pastors who have, to, who have to protect the scripture. And be good, be, be good student of the scripture. I rather disputing the scripture and saying all sorts of ungodly and unrighteous things against the scripture because they do not have God and the Spirit of God in them. With all due respect, I want to tell everybody watching me: protect your faith. You are at the, you are on the right path. Protect your faith. We are at the end time. We are the end time. That is the reason why recently you can't even hear a prophet of God saying God spoke to me. They rather say their angels spoke to them. I'm not disputing the fact that God uses angels. We all use angels to prophesy. But an angel is, 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 an, is, is a messenger of God. So an angel can never say a different thing from what God is saying. An uh, angel only carry a message from God. With all due respect, everybody watching me, please protect your salvation. A lot of pastors are going to hell and they are dragging a lot of people into hell with them. Don't be part of them. They know that they are sold their souls to the devil. They have no connection with God. They don't have Christ-like, Christ-like I repeat, Christ-like in them. They know that they have sold their souls to the devil for crowd, for money, for fame, for wealth. And they know that they are going to hell and they want to say a lot of things that will frustrate a lot of Christians so that they will go to hell with them. Don't be part of that. Don't be part of that. 
the greatest tragedy that can ever happen to a man is for you to live on earth and die and go to hell. It's a tragedy. It's a big tragedy. With all due respect, don't follow these cold men of God who are going to hell. Don't go to hell with them. Don't be part of it. Make a firm stand and decision for yourself that you want to be a candidate of heaven, not a candidate of hell. If they sold their souls to the devil and they are going to hell, let them go alone. You didn't enjoy their wealth and their money with them. So you can't go to hell with them. So don't allow whatever they are saying distract you from making heaven. Don't allow whatever they are saying frustrate you to lose your salvation. Heaven is real. Don't allow anybody to tell you heaven is not real. Heaven is real. Hell is real. Judgment is real. Jesus is real. God is real. Holy Spirit is real. Holy angels of God are real. Salvation is real. Speaking to somebody to, to this evening or afternoon, depending on wherever you are watching me from, that hold on to your salvation and don't lose it. Don't allow whatever any frustrated man of God is saying frustrate you. Don't allow what, whatever any backslided man of God is saying distract you. Hold on to what you believe in. And don't lose your faith. If they don't believe in Jesus, believe in Jesus. Because he is there. The Bible says those that comes unto God but believe that he is. And he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. It means he is. He is. He is real. He is there. <laughs> You understand what I'm trying to say? So please, don't let these uh, noise-making pastors who are frustrated because they had their time and they misuse it and now they are no more relevant because they want to be relevant. They want to say some things that will make them relevant. Don't let those men of God distract you and then cause you to, to panic and decide to lose your faith because of what they say. They are frustrated men of God. They are, they are basilided men of God. This is all I want to tell you. Okay, so my my network just forgot, but I think it's bad. So what I want to say is that with all due respect, hold on to your faith. Don't let anybody distract you from your vision of entering into the kingdom of God that is heaven. And always remember that is appointed once for every man to die. And after death, there is judgment. So you have to remember that judgment awaits everybody. Don't let anybody distract you from your aim of entering into heaven. Please, with all due respect, love yourself and love your soul enough to stay away from any so-called man of God who doesn't believe in the Bible who think the Bible is a storybook, who thinks the Bible is an, is, a, is an a cake book and full of lies. Stay away from those people because they, they aren't going to do you any good. It's just going to... Your life, so take care of yourself. I just have to leave you. I'm getting ready for my program. Always remember that I love you so much, but always remember that Jesus loves you more. That's why he died for you. We are praying for you. Continue to put us in prayer. And I pray that may God cause you to be well established. That no winds of the evil will blow you away. Take care of yourself. I love you. I always remember Jesus loves you more. See you later. Shalom. Peace. Bye-bye.